All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and actually complete the rest of the modeling. The only map we really have here are, of course, the uh, the map when you bring up the camera menu. I'm gonna use that as kind of a loose approximation of what these rooms are supposed to look like. And then I guess I'll just have to check out my source material to get a better understanding of what each area is kind of like. It looks like the box is, this is a pretty big misunderstanding on my part the entire time I've been playing this game. The camera box is actually the camera itself and its orientation really depend. well, there's no orientation specified in the window. So I'm kind of assuming that the dining area 1B cam is looking over the pretty large swath of that area. I can't see the backstage area, so it has to be behind it. In camera 1A, you really can't see anything at all, so I guess that's the stage. Although, uh, if the camera's there, why wouldn't it be further down? That's probably just an orientation thing. The real cameras probably don't pertain to where they're the real location is in space. It's just set up on this map for convenience. Let's do a screenshot of this print screen. Let's gra grab Photoshop real quick. Paste that on down. Control V. There we are. Let's grab this region over here. Something like that. Mod it up a little bit. Just get it somewhat close. That's good. Enter uh, image, image size, make it a power of two just for friendliness. 1024 by, ooh, I guess I didn't. We're going to slightly distort it. Four pixels on an image that size isn't going to really matter at all. All right, so now we have our view of the scene. Let's go ahead and save this out. Let's call this uh, floor plan. Enter, enter, save. Let's close Photoshop. Let's go back into Maya real quick. So this is our initial rough estimate of what that room is going to look like. We're going to use that as reference for the rest of everything else. Let's create a new plane. Scale that plane up. Get rid of those subdivisions. We don't need them. Call this uh, floor plan and create a new layer. Call this reference. Save. Grab this. Right click. Add selected. Move that up a little bit. And right click. Go to assign new material. Let's do a fong here inside of fong. We're going to call this ref floor plan underscore m. Color is going to re be replaced with a file. Uh, let's actually grab that file real quick. Up, up, and go to Photoshop and floor plan. Perfect. So because the image was uh, the same width and height, and because this plane is the same width and height, I know, you know, there's no distortion going on here, and I can just kind of try to place this as accurately as possible. Now, there's nothing saying that this map is accurate at all. It most likely is just a loose representation of the actual layout, but I can at least use it as some kind of reference for this. Actually, that makes those, those if this was true, these doors would be massively thick. Look at the distance between those two areas. That's huge. You could probably withstand a nuclear blast with wind, with areas that wide. But once again, that's probably just for us as players to get a better sense of what the proportions really are. Let's uh, template that layer so I can't mess with it. Save this out. We're no longer dealing with a security security room. Let's call this rough floor layout. So now we just need to start filling this thing with sections. I'm actually going to move this down ever so slightly so I'm not getting that clipping. Z fighting, I should say. Now that we're here, let's just start plopping down some boxes. So let's create a box, bring it on in here, bring it up. Uh, let's go ahead and, and invert it because I'm going to use this box a lot. Mm, mesh display, reverse. Let's just duplicate this box several times, getting all of those boxes in their right areas, respectively. I don't know what that room is. Or that room. The stage is really, I'm guessing, an element of this, this larger area. So I'm not going to really worry about that. Now, Cam 1C. What is going on with that one? Cam... So Foxy has his own little alcove looking over this entire area. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't get your own box. You're going to be part of this bigger box. Let's do a top-down view. Let's also do back face culling. Let's uh, make these areas larger. Grab this one as well. Let's go ahead and start making them larger. Just fill it out, make it work. All right, so now we have all the different areas laid out. Our next step is going to be to resize them properly and then of course cut out the different stages, the stage one and of course Foxy's side stage. I'm probably going to assume the heights of these at different areas are relatively the same except for the dining area, which I'll make taller because it does have these little alcoves, alcoves in them. So let's do that. Let's grab the floor, bring it on down top, bring it on up, I guess. Do this one as well. Bring that one down. Up. Down. Let's see, we're only doing a rough, uh, we're just roughing in the geometry here. We're not. Ooh, did I grab an edge? How the hell would I do that? Oh. Yeah, that would do it. Okay, so those are our rooms. Like I said, I know I'm going to artificially raise the height of that main area. I just don't know by how much at this point. Now, to make things a little bit more realistic, let's take a look at what these rooms look like individually and get a better sense of what's going on. So this is room seven. That looks like a stage on Foxy's area. Maybe down there at the bottom? Let's do 100, let's do 200%. Zoom on down there and try to see. Maybe there's a stage. Oh, I really can't tell. Um, let's assume there is. I think, yeah, I think I'm just going to assume there is some sort of a stage. Let us use our insert edge loops with our relative distance set up. And let's just do one right there and another one there. And let's come over to this stage now one right around there do another one right about there okay so those are our stages now I am going to assume yeah let's just let's see how much how much would a stage be in height let's do Chuck E. Cheese because that's what I kind of think of when I think of Five Nights at Freddy's um, Chuck E. Cheese and I'm a Matronic stage Yeah, see, they are, are up on a stage, and that stage is at least the height of a table. And that's and, and the ceiling looks pretty damn high as well. So I'm thinking we, we three feet? A meter? Let's do a meter. Let's do about a meter up. Right click, insert edge loop tool, meter. I don't know, somewhere right around there. Yeah, let's do that. So that's one, two, and three. Yeah, we'll do that. And with something like this, there's also a top bit but I think you can kind of ignore that in this case because the whole room's height is going to be popped higher up so let's um, just arbitrarily raise that up a little bit it looks good to me okay so now we have our two theater areas so let's go ahead and extrude that out look at it from the top pull that on out look at it from the other side now grab this come on over here and Extrude. That Foxy's is deep. Are those the same depth? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so Foxy literally has the same amount of space as the other one. If these floor plans can be believed. And uh, now let's let's get a better sense of the thickness between these elements. Should I move the room closer to its location or make the room larger? So like for instance, this camera, this room right here. I mean, obviously, there's not a whole lot of space between these two elements, so I'm more inclined to make the room larger. So let's just do that. Let's grab this guy and 
just get him a lot closer to that other area. And let's go to shading, wireframe on shaded so I can see things easier. Let's get rid of the grid. Uh, display, grid off, please. Yes. And we can see we also probably want things to line up unless we want secret rooms, which we're not doing. No, we're not, we're not doing it. Sorry. Okay. Move that there. Uh, these guys, I just completely ignored that one, didn't I? No, I didn't. That's just the camera's huge. All right, well, once again, we're gonna make things bigger. Yeah, like that. Um, so these rooms, then, I guess I'm gonna have to just sort of push up like that to make them work. Just do that, and this one here. And I'll, I'm probably gonna change these later on because I haven't even started to, uh, what? Oh, it's the cameras, that's right, okay. And this room, this room's gonna get bigger to get close to that one. And of course, then we deal with the size of this room in respect to these two rooms on the sides. So, oh crap. Let's, uh, do we have some footage of those other rooms? Let's take a look here. There we go. Um, geez. If each tile is a foot, which is typical of tile, one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, maybe? Six tiles across, so two meters, roughly? Hmm, two meters, huh? Let's go back to that grid. One, two, I can't make these rooms any bigger without really violating. Well, since there's, since we have no concept of how these rooms should really be situated with respect to each other, I'm more inclined to move these two rooms together than I am to do much else. Are these connected? No. Right, yeah, I'm going to move this one, these guys, inwards. I want to retain their actual spacing. Let's do a D and uh, move it in. Whoops. Restrict its movement and then move it to that side area. Same thing here. Let's, uh, let's, let's do DV to grab its corner and then move that over to the side. There we go. And then, of course, this one I'll just slightly push in again. All right. So that's our layout for the game. Next thing I want to do is probably carve in all of the doors. So let's carve in. I'm going to assume all doors are the same height in this world. So let's go ahead and use our insert edge loop tool to start just throwing down some edge loops real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see, start aligning things with the heights of these doors. Whoops. So all the door heights are in now. Now I should, I should probably just copy the frames, move them to where I would expect the door to be, and uh, then cut inward so that everything's once again that standard height. That way when I do texturing and so forth, I can just copy the same object over and over and over again and make things really easy for me. Oh, I didn't move this one. So this guy. So wait, who is, who is this one connected to? there so it will not have any impact if I move these ones in closer let's do that let's do something like that yeah okay so I can get rid of the background now I, I know where all the layouts are I know where everything is so thinking about this fundamentally where the hell is the exit for this damn place is it at the security station do people walk in and out right here I'm guessing so. And this makes this establishment kind of interesting. It really just is all about the animatronics, because there's no games, there's no parlors, there's nothing like a Chuck E. Cheese here. It's, uh, you come in, you eat your feast in the main central area, you watch some things spin around, like, what are these areas over here, actually, besides... Let's take a look. There's, jeez, there's all kinds of crap, but... Supply closet. That's a supply closet. I guess this is your entrance? Rooms. These are the restrooms. So male and female restrooms. That's what those are. Okay. Pretty damn small for restrooms. I think I understand now. Let's carve stuff up. Uh, let's go in here. Let's use the insert edge loop tool again. Make a couple edges. 
Oops. Match them up accordingly. Okay, so let's grab the frame and the door, I guess, itself. The whole shebang. We'll grab both sides. Now, the frame is going to need to be duplicated across this object. But I do want to continue to use the frame. Well, let's just use the frame for right now as our door maker. Duplicate that. Move it around now. And uh, look at it from a top-down view. Let's go to Shading X-Ray and get a, an idea of where, I guess, this frame would be right about there. This frame is going to be right up here. Rotate this 90 degrees, negative 90, and situate this uh, about there. Looks like there's another door. It's going to go somewhere like right around there. Just mirror image it to the other side. Uh, no other doors. Oh, there's one more door like that. It's going to be over here. Let's put it right there. And now I'm going to need all side doors for the rest of what I'm doing. So let's do a control D, bring it on up over here, and control D again, move this guy to that side, control D, and start putting in the bathroom doors as well. Yep. Okay, so those are all the doors. So now I next need to cut up all these doors, but I think I'm gonna take a break because Arthur's screaming his head off. So let's hit Control-Save, File-Save-Scene-As.